It's curious, I think, Darren, that while we're having these rulings now that seem to be heading down the road of saying that this shouldn't be happening in this country, here in North Carolina, we may actually be expanding how we use taxpayer financing. Well, you know, I guess, you know, they forget that they take an, an oath to the Constitution, unfortunately. I would certainly hope they don't expand it after this order. Um, it would be really irresponsible. Um, even bad for the legislature that hasn't always respected the Constitution. You know, I think the Supreme Court will wind up hearing this Arizona case and ruling in the fall or early spring of next year, and then I think they'll strike down matching funds. So just because the legislature doesn't respect the Constitution doesn't mean the Supreme Court doesn't, at least on this issue. Explain exactly how taxpayer financing is now used in North Carolina. For what races is this in place? Um, appellate court races, so Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, and also for Chapel Hill has taxpayer financing. They're the only municipality that has it, not surprising. And you also have a few council of state races, like superintendent of instruction and commissioner of insurance. Mm -hmm. So the, the push is to try to expand it to all to more municipalities. Eventually, they want to have it for every office, and even for legislators as well. The argument for this is that, well, it leads to so-called clean elections, and that if we get big money, I use that in quotes, um, out mm -hmm. of the system, that this will make this better and more fair for everybody. Any yeah. merit at all yeah. to that? No, because in fact, there's no evidence that there's less money in these campaigns. Um, money simply shifts from the kind of a direct contribution to a candidate to simply independent groups spending money or 527. So you might actually have, it's actually been an increase in a lot of states um, in terms of money.